On a magical sunny day, somewhere on the outskirts of a beautiful city, a young man is hammering a nail and rejoicing that his building has been completed. We see a beautiful building with a restaurant sign on it. Our hero starts crying because he finally opens his restaurant after 15 years. Our hero's name was Allison, who was also a ninth grade archimage. 15 years ago, our hero was coming home from school as usual, he starts yawning because he was late for practicing cutting food, but before he knew it, it was already very dark outside. Our hero really liked cooking, so he enrolled in a school with a culinary bias, and he was going to become a first-class cook and open his own restaurant. With these thoughts, the hero was crossing the pedestrian, but to him at the meeting drove all the favorite trucks in, which hit him. When Allison opens his eyes, his head starts to split open and he doesn't realize where he is. Holding his hand over his head, behind him everything was ablaze with fire, and in front of him everyone was fighting a huge dragon. As it turned out later, our hero found himself in a fantasy world. Looking at everything that is happening, the hero realizes that this place turned out to be far from peaceful. And then Ella is grabbed by some man, from which the hero begins to get scared. The hooded man tells our guy that he needs to evacuate as soon as possible, because he can die here. Everyone lines up at the shelter and Allison asks the man with the mustache where they are. The man looks at our guy and notices he's dressed strangely, but says this is the back of the Ruburn Empire, and he never thought the Scarlet Dragons would come this far and attack them. Allison looks at the devastation and fire everywhere and realizes that the world he has fallen into is full of monsters and magic, not realizing what's going on here. And it's a good thing people here adapt quickly. But still, our hero needs to accept what's happening as soon as possible. Allison is thinking positive thoughts. He almost got hit by a truck, so this is his second chance. And then he thinks about the fact that now he won't have to take exams and he won't have to join the army. And then he thinks maybe he won't have to join the army here. And then a man on a horse appears on the horizon, asking for everyone's attention. He holds up a piece of paper and says it's an imperial decree. And then he says, citizens of the Ruburn Empire, the fate of the nation hangs in the balance. Mercenary wars have fled and knights have fallen in battle. There is no longer any escape from the dragons. Therefore, all of them will have to stand up to defend their country. After all these words, all the people are excited. But only Allison doesn't understand what this is all about. And then the same man tells everyone that the Emperor has ordered them all to fight to the death. And everyone starts screaming and cheering even more. And that's when a clearly frustrated Ellison began to realize that he had come into this world in the middle of a war with dragons. And since the country's army was depleted and the Empire relies on contract laborers, the government had to institute conscription. A bald man asks Ellison if he has any relatives of noble or knightly descent. But the hero doesn't understand at all how this could have happened to him. Then it turns out that men between the ages of 17 and 45, regardless of their origin, were automatically assigned to the knight's army. The bald man realizes that our hero has no such relatives, so he asks him not to hold up the line. Allison entering the room sees that some were also unhappy with their fate, and some have already resigned themselves to it. The next day, the commander asks the soldiers to salute, and Ellison, through his tears, thinks he'd rather be hit by a truck than by this army. And since our Ellison had some pretty good potential, the commander informs him that after his training, he'll be going into the magical forces. In the cafeteria, everyone is served local food that looks like thick swamp water that had rotten potatoes in it. But still tasting this food, Allison thinks that being a magician is better than mindlessly swinging a sword. And then our hero becomes uncomfortable after such a terrible taste. But for others, this food is not bad at all and even tasty. Allison is shocked by his comrades, as he does not understand how it can be delicious. And then he sees his comrade in arms imbibing this semblance of food and he gets a brilliant idea. Allison thinks about what if he opened his own restaurant here. Practicing with everyone else, Allison can't help but think that here he can realize his dream. Practicing magic, Allison thinks that dragons are just beasts and his service will be over in two years and he'll just have to be patient for a little while. But Ellison didn't know that his service would last not three or even four years, but 15 years. And thinking about it, Allison wonders, would he have been able to keep his spirit alive if he had known he would serve 15 years? But still, the time, it's gone by pretty quickly. The scene changes to a marvelous town called Greek. The girl notices some new building and wonders if there was a store here. But suddenly, she notices our hero, who is standing and crying as he has finally finished building his restaurant. 
and the girl realizes that our guy has been holding all these feelings in himself for a very long time. She walks up to him and asks him if he's okay. Allison turns around wiping his tears and says everything is fine, he's just very happy that he finally opened his restaurant. The girl was surprised that it was the owner himself, and then introduces herself, saying her name is Reyna. Allison extends his hand and introduces himself as well, saying it's nice to meet you. Reyna starts asking Allison how long has he been here and did he come alone? Allison says he's not here alone, and he's been in this place for a while. And then he says that he has a significant other, but he really likes to sleep and is unlikely to wake up until tonight. And at that moment we see a black-haired girl wrapped in a blanket. Then Reyna remembers that Ellison said something about a restaurant, so she asks him if he needs a meat vendor. And the hero informs her that he was just about to look for a butcher. Reyna tells Elle that her husband has a butcher shop on the left side of the alley at the entrance to town called Knoll's Butcher Shop. Ellison was very happy to hear this news, so he says he'll go there right away. But Reyna warns him that her husband can be very testy. If he gets angry, she tells Ellison to say you're from me. Ellison smiles and thinks Reyna is a very nice girl, then says he gets it. A little later, Ellison walks into the butcher shop and sees a menacing and big man, clearly not happy about Ellison coming to see him. At this point, Ellison is really scared and didn't know what to say. And then he starts mumbling that he has a small restaurant nearby, and this angry man has a butcher shop, so he's looking for someone. But the man immediately interrupts Ellison and says he doesn't sell meat, which Ellison doesn't understand at all. The man starts yelling at him again and says that he doesn't sell meat, and then says that all of you are like that, buying meat and then reselling it for three times the price. Allison scratches his head and thinks to himself that he didn't mean to do that. But the butcher stands his ground and says that our hero is just like everyone else. And then, butcher gets hit with something heavy. Reyna came to the butcher shop because she knew something bad was going on. She apologizes to Allison for her husband. Her husband says he doesn't want to sell the meat because he's already suffered from people like him. Reyna starts yelling at her husband, but Allison at this point just wants to go home. Eventually, she sends her husband to get the meat, and then apologizes to Elle one more time and explains that she's been catering a restaurant for a long time as a contract worker, and he still can't get over how he was treated. Then Reyna marvels that Ellison is so young and already in the military. Ellison says that he's been through a lot and that 15 years of experience is not forgotten. Then the husband comes in and brings meat and tells our guy to show off his skills. Ellison looks in the sack and was clearly not pleased. That's when the man starts to get indignant about the fact that Ellison thought he was going to sell him great meat from Belorin. The man says he only sells that kind of meat to restaurants he trusts. And Ellison didn't think he'd get meat like this. And then a frying pan flies in the man's direction as he talks about Ellison making a decent dish. And if he doesn't like it, Ellison can forget about good meat. The man goes on to tell Ellison that he is a very picky eater. And then says that Ellison seems to be seriously frightened because his face was terrified. But as it turns out, the man's body was lying unconscious while his astral body was trying to reach our hero. And the cause of this event was Reyna, who had hit her husband with this frying pan, which had a huge dent in it. Allison is worried that Reyna hit him hard with the frying pan, but she says that Allison was not worried, because her husband is a nut. In the end, Allison agrees to cook him his coveted dish, which surprises Reyna. Allison tells them to come to his restaurant and he'll set it up. When Allison leaves, However, Reyna asks how will you cook something with this meat, asking if she can get you some Belorin meat? But Allison refuses, saying that this meat will be enough to make a delicious dish. Reyna looks at the sack of meat and tells the departing hero that it contains the fat of Yuba. As it turns out, in this world, cattle have different names. For example, cows are called Yuga, chickens are called Palenza, and wolves are called Belorin. But pigs are called Yuba. Allison pulls out the meat and says the guests will be here soon. Looking at the belly of the loss, Allison says it's time to start cooking. Allison looks at this meat carefully and thinks that now she understands why Mr. Creston is so proud of this meat, because it is the best. But Palenza, unlike chicken, is a very expensive ingredient. The cheapest meat here is Yuba, or in our language, pork, and the cheapest part is the belly. Looking at the meat, Allison doesn't understand why this part is so disliked and then starts using fire magic to roast this delicious pig. The scene changes to a beautiful sunset where Reyna indignantly asks her husband about why he said he would only deliver good meat to trusted restaurants. After all, Allison is a good person. But the man replies to his wife that she doesn't know him to say that. 
But Reina says that she is not the person who is always being cheated, and these words clearly upset her husband. And Reina looks at her husband and tells him to admit that she just wants to see Ellison's cooking skills. And Reina seems to hit it right on the mark. And then he says he's very picky, and asks his wife what she'll do if he turns out to be a terrible cook. Reina says, what are you going to do? And the man walking down the path alone says he'll give him half of what she asked for. The scene changes to a fearsome orc screaming at the top of his lungs, hitting a soldier with his huge club, whose mouth is bleeding. A lot of people have fallen on this battlefield and the commander, looking at this madness, tells everyone to retreat as there are too many monsters. Then one of the soldiers screams for help as he can't get out from under the rubble as his leg is stuck. The orc swings his club while this poor guy is sobbing at the top of his lungs saying he's here. And when help was nowhere to be expected, a mage arrives and uses a spell, the Blade of Searle. And then a bright light flashes, blinding all enemies and comrades. The orcs begin to growl unhappily at having their plan of carnage thwarted. Soon the rocks begin to rise up and the man under the rubble has been rescued. Everyone turns around and is delighted to see Mr. Ellison. As it turns out, at the time Ellison was a great magician who came at the right moment to save his comrades. Returning to the present, Allison summons a sirloin blade to give the meat a good cut, which helps to improve the flavor of the seasonings, and during roasting, excess liquid evaporates and makes the meat crispier. Finally done cooking the meat, the first customers enter the restaurant, in the form of Reina and her husband. Allison asks them to be seated wherever they want, as the dish is almost done. Reina was very pleased with the place, it was clean and cozy. But her husband thinks it's just a show off and nothing more. But Reina pulls out her PUBG pan and tells her husband to stop nagging and just wait for the food and her husband has no choice but to agree in front of such an ironclad argument. Allison begins his cooking. He pours oil on the hot stove and then lays a whole piece of Yuba's meat on it and then waits for all the moisture to evaporate from that meat. Ellison sees his meat cooking, and from that sound of the oil sizzling, it's like an angelic chorus to him. With tongs, he flips the meat so that each side is fried to a golden crust. After that, he adds salt and seasoning and then bakes the meat well inside. After that, he slices it into bite-sized pieces. He also makes a small salad. Allison thinks that perhaps this combination is unknown to the locals, and a hot sauce could be added to emphasize the juiciness of the meat. But since Mr. Creston seems to be very picky, Allison thinks not to take any chances with the hot sauce. After the salad was done, it was time to put everything on the plate. And now, the roast pork and salad can be served. While serving this dish, Reina notices how wonderful it looks and it even impresses our picky eater. Reina tastes the meat and can't believe how good it is, she can't believe she sees pigs running towards her. In the end, she can't believe it was belly fat because it's so delicious. But Allison says it was. Reina was pleased and now Allison thinks he can supply meat to his kitchen. He asks Mr. Creston how he likes the food, but sees that Creston just took all the food, leaving his plate completely empty. Gritting his teeth, Mr. Creston says they have no more meat. And then he hits the table with his fist, and the hero doesn't realize if the customer is satisfied or not. Creston says he's not satisfied and he wants more and more of this food. And Reina hits him again with her frying pan. Creston grumbles a little bit, but still stands up and says this is the best dish he's ever tasted. And from now on, he would supply only the best meat in the Ruburn Empire especially for Ellison, to which Ellison was very grateful. And then with a firm handshake, they conclude the contract between the restaurant owner and the butcher. And then Creston again asks him to bring him as much meat as possible. And meanwhile, the sleeping girl was still lying in her bed, but then she gets up because she smells the delicious smell of food. The scene changes to early evening where we still see Ellison's restaurant the same way. In it are guests who want two more servings of Yuba's belly and they seem to really like the meat. Ellison happily serves them their entrees and they were devoured in the same instant. Leaving the diners satisfied as they really enjoyed the food and especially the Bell Lorena meat. Allison is at the restaurant, thinking it's time to start cleaning up, but notices that his spices and seasonings were already too little. And everyone knows how important spices and seasonings are in the world of cooking. But luckily for Allison, he knows how to fix the problem. He takes out a gold coin, starts drawing a magic circle and puts the gold coin in the center, and then starts reciting the spell that made that bright blue light appear. His eyes start to sparkle and the room fills with bright light. And after that, everything you need to cook appears. There were a few spices and various sauces. As it turned out, 
Allison had developed this magic quite by accident when he was trying to return to his world, and any magic is good if you use it. Still, there are size and weight restrictions here, but this technique is very useful. But watching everything summoned, Ellison wishes he could move home as easily as this pepper box. He sends one gold coin for delivered food, but unfortunately the meat, eggs, and vegetables spoil on the way. Also, this magic takes a lot of energy, so after this summoning, Allison just collapses from fatigue. And even for a ninth grade archimage like him, one summon a day is the limit. Ellison then opens his refrigerator to have a can of beer, as he is very tired but notices that the fridge was empty. And then in anger, he yells Lurin. And we see the same girl from the second floor, who is currently asleep with beer bottles lying around her. Allison hits her on the head, but she doesn't realize what she did wrong. Allison shows the empty can and asks how could she drink all the beer, especially since she didn't clean up. But Lurin says it's because Allison didn't leave her any goodies, because when he woke up and went downstairs, there were only leftovers. Lurin cries out that she's a dragon, and dragons aren't suckers for cleaning up. But that only makes Ellison angry and he gives her a couple of slaps again, and then orders her to peel her bow and clean up after herself. Lurin starts cleaning her bow and cries, either from the bow or from being beaten, and then just says she's a dragon. Allison looks at this girl and thinks about how she really is a dragon, but now she's in human form. When there was a war with the dragons, Ellison accidentally stumbled upon her when she lost her mother and lost her lair. So he couldn't leave her there, and now he cares for her. And though you can't tell from her, she's lived for hundreds of years. Then Allison decides to take pity on Lurin and tells her to finish cleaning and he'll make her sty for dinner, so there's no reason to be offended. And Lurin was very happy that Allison promised her steak. And then, Ellison notices Creston walking into his restaurant, and from the look on his face, he's in trouble. Creston asks for something strong and Allison asks him to wait a minute. Looking in the refrigerator, Ellison sees that all the beer has been drunk by Lurin. So he decides to serve Creston something else. Serving hard liquor and meat, Creston wonders, what is this? Water? Allison says it's not water, but it's really good too. This drink is called soju. Creston holds up a glass of soju and it smells kind of weird, but still decides to try it and then snacks on the meat. Creston then wonders how good it tastes, because the drink has made the meat taste different. Creston tells Ellison that he's a great cook, and then asks for another bottle. And Allison notices that Mr. Creston is looking a little strange today and that something's wrong. Time after time, Creston asks for another bottle of soju, but Allison says he's had enough, as the drink is quite strong. But Creston says he has to get drunk tonight. Ellison wonders why Creston needs to get so drunk, so he asks him about what happened. Creston lowers his head and then says it's about rain. The atmosphere heats up and with a heavy expression on his face, Creston tells Ellison that Reyna probably has another man, which immediately shocks Ellison. Creston starts talking about how she's said a couple times that she needs to go out, but now it happens all the time. Every month she dresses up. And then he says that one day I decided to go after her since it had been going on for months, and what he found out shocked him. The man she was with was his former battle buddy. To him, this person was his close friend, but after Creston opened the butcher shop, they never saw each other again. And now it was clear to him why that had happened. He must have been embarrassed to look Creston in the eye, since he was preoccupied with Reyna. And then gritting his teeth, Creston says that she left again today and she probably doesn't love him anymore. Allison looks at him and says that a bottle won't help, but Creston says he doesn't know how to get through it all. Creston closes his eyes and touches his hand to his face and then says to Allison, you know what the funny thing is? I still love her. Because despite all of this, he still can't be without her. So he doesn't understand what he should do now. Allison looks at a grief-stricken Creston and decides to help him. Even though they haven't seen Reyna in a while, he doesn't think she's the kind of person Creston described, so he asks him to wait a bit. The scene then shifts to Lurin, who is still peeling onions and in tears, as well as saying that Ellison is an idiot. Soon Allison comes up to her and tells her to finish up because there's something she needs to do. And then tells Lurin, well, if you want, you can stay to peel onions. But Lurin immediately agrees to go along with him. Being in the center of the night city, people are partying and dining in luxurious establishments. And Lurin is impressed that the restaurants here are very crowded, not like some people's. And those words clearly hurt Ellison's feelings. Soon they notice Reyna and a man with white hair and Reyna was clearly upset about something. As they look at the man, 
Allison remembers Creston saying that he was his battle buddy. Allison calls out to Lurin and asks if she sees that woman, and then asks to overhear the conversation between that woman and that man. But Lurin asks Ellison if he will give her a steak if she does, and Ellison says he'll give her two whole steaks and Lurin agrees. She starts to use her powers and hears about Reyna asking the man sitting next to her about telling her husband everything. As it turns out, this man with white hair was named Mant. Reyna talks about how her husband is beginning to suspect them, as he is sad that Mant doesn't come into their butcher shop anymore. Mant begins to think about it and says he can't come in like this, because if Creston finds out about his help, he'll treat him even worse. After hearing all these words, Ellison is surprised and he thinks it doesn't sound like a business meeting. He then jumps off the roof, since he doesn't need to know anymore, and also tells Lurin to go home. Ellison is behind them, listening to Reyna say they did it to save their marriage, but then Ellison comes closer and asks if he can intervene? And Ellison's appearance really surprised Reyna and Minta, and Ellison just says that Creston does have a lot of suspicions. While at Ellison's restaurant, Creston is lying on the table as he has had a lot to drink. Suddenly, he notices Mant and his wife Reyna walk through the door. Mant looks at his friend with sad eyes and says that they haven't seen each other for a long time. Creston gets up from the table and clearly very angry, and says that Mant and Reyna look very good together. But Reyna tries to explain everything to Creston, that it's not what he thinks it is. Clenching his fist, Creston is furious that he believed his friend. And then he lashes out at his friend. Mant clamped his eyes shut expecting a blow from Creston. But a barrier appeared in front of him, saving him from Creston's blow. Mant was surprised that he was still in one piece. And Reyna was also surprised that it was the barrier's magic. Then Allison shows up as well, asking Mant if it might be best to clear things up. Allison walks into the restaurant and holds up the food, and also says that aggression won't solve anything. After all, they should just say that Mant lent money to Creston to open a butcher shop. And those words immediately make Creston freeze in place. Creston turns around and asks Ellison to repeat what he said, but Ellison just tells them to sit down at the table and talk while he prepares food for everyone. Allison gets everything ready to cook since Creston has been drinking all day, so Allison wants to make him a restorative soup for his digestion. And since Reyna brought Bellerin's special meat, we can make Saibu Saibu. Shabu Shabu is a dish of thinly sliced meat and vegetables served with a sauce. Allison wants to prepare several sauces, but the main one will be soy sauce. And when the broth is ready, the anchovies will need to be rinsed and placed in the pot. And when Allison finished his preparations, the shabu shabu was ready. And at the same time, Allison hoped they had gotten rid of their misunderstandings. A little while later, Creston couldn't believe what his wife said, that man had lent them money. Reyna sighs and says that after the deception he had no money left, and Mr. Mant gave them most of his savings. And when the butcher shop began to bring in a steady income, Reyna began to see Mant to repay the debt. Creston can't understand how this happened. After all, the money was given after the cheater was caught, and then realizes it was a lie. Mant asks Creston if he would have taken the money if he'd told the truth, and then apologizes for not being there to congratulate him on opening the shop. He simply had no choice, for if the truth were to be revealed, he would end up a cheat. But Mant didn't realize that Creston was having such a hard time right now. A frustrated Creston asks Mant about whether he didn't have plans after his resignation. Oh, and how could he give away so much money? And that's when Allison cuts in, which causes these two to start staring at him intently, and Allison says that vegetables take a long time to cook, so kinda yeah. Anyway, they start evaluating the dish and Mant is surprised that the meat is so thin. Allison tells them that it's Belloran meat from Creston's shop, and he sliced it thin on purpose because it's only served with soup. Then he asks everyone to try his dish. Everyone pours a portion of food into their cups, and Mant tastes it, amazed at how good it is. He holds the food out to Creston for him to taste. And when Creston tastes it, something awakens in him. A memory that Mant is about to tell us about. Mant tells us that Creston sacrificed himself to save him. And he remembers that day very well. They had run out of provisions, and the fight had gone on too long. And all they had left to eat was a lean and unpalatable soup. And that's when Mant caught Belloran. But he caught only one, and he immediately collapsed on the floor. The soup they made was bland and the meat was tough. But it was still amazing. Creston, <sighs> barely containing himself, confirms Mant's words. And then Mant says, You asked me why I helped you despite my plans. But it turns out Mant didn't have any plans. After all, the only thing he wanted to do was to help Creston. Hearing these words, Creston, 
unable to hold back his tears, begins to cry and apologize. And he's really sorry. But this dish really warms the soul. A little later, Lurin wakes up and is outraged that she hasn't been fed yet and you have to keep your promises to dragons. Ellison sighs and says it's not evening yet and he'll make steaks for her. But Lurin still stands her ground since it's nighttime and based on their agreement, she demands food immediately. But at that moment, Ellison is called out by Mant. Ellison turns around and asks him if he liked the food. Mant replies that it was awesome, but he came to ask him something. As it turns out, he and his squad had recently been instructed to escort a rather high-ranking person and they all wanted to celebrate with a dinner before they left. So Mant asks if that dinner can be held at this restaurant, and Ellison shuts up, as he's going to have to make dinner for the whole squad. Well, has the first part of the story come to an end? Did you enjoy this story? Let's get 500 likes for part 2, and as soon as we get that many likes, I will release part 2 of this story. Well, if you've seen the rest of the story, write the word wolf in the comments. Then I'll realize that you watched the video to the end. And also write in the comments, do you like when the story is told in detail, or you can omit some unnecessary details to tell only what is necessary. I'll be interested and helpful to know this for my future videos. See you later and bye bye.